Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for speaking English. I think probably just for my benefit, <laughs> which I feel a bit embarrassed about. Um, okay, well, some of you may have seen this, um, but uh, not too many, hopefully. So um, we're starting off with what the government specified, what the experts proposed, the design after review by a committee, the compromise, the system installed, and what the people actually wanted. It's really all about uh, the community and the, this thing about uh, bringing taste to people or uh, imposing things upon people or people making decisions. Uh, often they're not the right decisions. Um, and experts aren't necessarily the people to make the right decisions. I'm going to come over here. So, um, um, people have probably heard of the wisdom of crowds. Um, there was a, a, a fair, this is one example, lots of examples of this sort of thing, where pe people at the fair were asked to guess the weight of the ox, and the, the average guess of the crowd was more accurate than any, any individual guess, and um, it was also more accurate than all of the, the experts um, who were asked, who were used to do cows and ox all the time. So by averaging out people's guesses, you get the right result. You can take from that what you will. Um, but we've, John Thompson and Partners, as, as Anna said, we've been working, um, well, for since the 80s uh, with communities, um, realizing really that the experts didn't have all the answers. Um, and, and we've been on this innovation timeline um, from in the mid-80s, is the, the community architecture movement, um, which took us into initially working on failed housing projects in, in London particularly, developing methodology which we call community planning, which will be, this is a, a book with the front cover that's from Poundbury, which was uh, a development by the Prince of Wales. This is the action planning event for starting to think about the, the, the new development of, of Poundbury. Uh, there's methodologies in there about how to engage communities in, in planning. Um, the idea of creating mixed, interesting places, not zoning things out and creating boring zones, but actually where creativity happens is where things are, are, are brought together, and the sparks fly. And so there's a whole movement called Urban Villages, uh, which is planning, about planning, but it's also about creativity, art, culture, creative communities. Um, we then developed methodologies of working with, with whole communities, towns and cities um, through a process that was run in, in, in the UK and in, in England uh, in the early noughties from about 2001 to about 2008. So we, we did a lot of work with whole towns and cities. I'll show you an example of some work we did in Scarborough. And also following on from, from some of the comments, um, the idea that professions often work in silos, really cutting across the professions um, is, can be very difficult. So uh, we, we've been very key. Uh, John Thompson was the, the founding chair of the Academy of Urbanism, uh, which is uh, an organization about uh, learning from place, place-based life, um, bringing together all the parties, all the individuals who are involved in creating places, particularly urbanists places um, and, and, and learning and working together from best practice. In fact, Gothenburg, where I stayed yesterday, last night, um, was as an awards program for the Academy of Urbanism. Gothenburg was shortlisted for European City of the Year, I believe, fairly recently. Uh, didn't win, unfortunately, it's a fantastic place. Uh, finally, the whole point, the whole sort of study or discipline of placemaking, which is a, a relatively new word, which I'm not sure. Uh, most of you have heard, heard of placemaking. We don't talk about urban design anymore it's, or architecture. It's about placemaking. Um, but, uh, but creating places where creative life can happen begs the question, what is art? You know, I'm the first person to say that. But, um, you know, is art uh, sculptures in, in, in a building or is it what happens within the building? Is it, is it markets? Is it people talking and laughing and telling jokes to each other? You know, is, what is it? Is it the cobbles on the street? 
you know, we enjoy all these things. Um, they're creative. So, what, is, what what do we mean when we're talking about art and culture? Um, so, our, so our philosophy is is all about community engagement. That sort of timeline of learning through 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 our professional life has, has uh, really been been all about understanding that you really the best results come when you work with communities, when you work not um, across across sectors um, and, and, and engage and develop what we call a collaborative planning approach. I won't go through all the, the bullet points, but um, and the collaborative planning um, can be applied to, to any, any scale of project, uh, actually from, from the, the smallest of interventions right, right up to, to, to developing cities, designing cities. Um, and there are lots of good reasons for, for doing it, creating shared visions, getting people in at the start. Um, I remember when I was training as an architect, landscape architects used to say we only get brought in at the end. But I think what we're hearing today, and, and, and really that everyone thinks that they're, they're not they're not brought in at the at the right time. We believe that people should be brought in at the beginning of the process, not the nearly the end part, just as a sort of final add-on. And it it, it has um, important implications for for what you can do, but also the value of, of, of what you do. It adds value in our view and in our experience. So I'm trying to go pushing the wrong button. Um, localism in the UK um, has been a, a big topic. The, the, the new coalition government, Conservative-led government, um, wanted to reduce the power of the state and impositions from above, uh, and, and, and really um, get bottom-up approaches, getting people deciding what happens in their neighbourhoods. So there's the neighbour planning agenda. Uh, and developers themselves ha have to consult. They have, there is a duty to consult. How they do that, though, um, maybe good or bad. But in terms of our, you know, at the end of the day, we design places. Um, but our process is, is about, first of all, understanding the place, understanding the DA, DNA of the place, what makes it, uh, makes it special. Um, then engaging, um, and that's with communities. Uh, Sometimes there, aren't, there isn't a community. We're doing a lot of work in, in China and Russia at the moment um, where uh, large areas of green field or uh, the powers that be are not ready yet to talk to the communities. So we still, still in, in, in involve the same methodology of collaborative placemaking. So working with whoever we can to bring every, everyone in through a process. I'll explain the process in a second. Uh, and then once we've understood and engaged, then when we can start to develop the proposals. This uh, process methodology has taken us all around the world. We have an office now in Shanghai. Um, we're doing a lot of uh, work and we're working a lot in, in Russia um, and all over Europe and down in Indonesia at times. And we do a lot of uh, range, scales of work from individual houses. Uh, this is the um, regeneration of an old mental Asylum in, in Sussex, um, eco buildings, um, high profile London Thameside uh, redevelopments. Uh, this is in Changzi Island in, in uh, southern China, new town centre design. This is a, an eco city design with bioclimatic design, thinking about how, the, how the, the climate affects the design of the place, and creates a sustainable community that's growing integrated into that, the whole water concept. Um, and all of this work is, that there are these standards for native design called Building for Life, um, and they incorporate not just the physical, but, but also the social and, and environmental sustainability and the quality of place. And we're the only practice in the UK to win eight awards for the places we've designed, so we're very proud of that. Um, and in terms of the, the process of engaging people, um, there has to be a, a starting point. Um, you usually might have a small number of people, the clients, and you might invite some people from outside to, to design the process. Um, we believe that the um, process of, of community animation then, actually going out um, to the community and starting to get to know people, meet them at their own place, develop trust, understand, start to understand the issues, um, hear it from the, the horse's mouth, not reports of what people 
people say, people think, you can actually hear it from them. Um, then we focus our, our, our activity usually on, on, a, on a charrette or a, 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 a community planning weekend or a, a, a design, design event. Um, and in order to do that, the launch is important to actually get the word out um, and tell people when it is, get it in the papers, etc. And then for the events themselves, um, we start off usually with post-it workshops. Um, we hear it again from, from people. We have a methodology using post-its where people can write things down and then hand them in and we, we, we facilitate uh, and encourage discussion and, and just encourage people to really put their points of view across. We find that by, by people working uh, with post-its and writing things down, they're much happier. Not everyone's happy to speak in public. Uh, but if you re read their post it out and then ask, you know, who, does someone want to ex explain that or, or expand on that, people are much happier then to answer that question and you get a very good full, full discussion. People start to hear from other people that other people have different priorities, other people may have an opposed view, uh, but you start to take people, people on the journey. Uh, we then go into hands-on planning, so actually getting people around plans, um, following the workshop, we also do walkabouts, uh, and people probably have never thought about their place as a, a, as a physical entity and what the physical relationships are. They may go from their home to the shop to the school, um, but they haven't actually necessarily looked at it on the map and realized how it all works, how it fits together, and then if you're talking about something new that could happen, how that could be worked out. Um, all of this is about feedback loops as well. It's about engaging people, involving them in the process, stopping the alienation that so often happens of people from processes that happen to them. This is them participating in the process. Um, from, from that, usually the, the, if we're running a community planning event, it might be five, six days. The, 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 the public session's usually a couple of days at the front. Uh, then we'll take the outcomes away as professionals, draw up a vision which we hope will represent what the community have been saying, and then report it back to the community. And then, um, depending on the project, um, there's the ongoing communication. People have been engaged, they understand what's happening, they've had, had their say, but there's also opportunities to keep coming back and keep having, having the say, depending on the project. Um, explain to people uh, what the next steps are and that this is a process. It, can there be open-ended processes? I think was a question that was asked. Um, we usually get involved in processes that are, have a defined end because that's probably why we're commissioned, but not to say that the, the wider process can't continue. Um, and I'll show you examples of that. Sorry, I'm probably up against my time already. Mm -hmm. The focus groups, um, there may be things that communities want to do themselves in terms of developing more information getting more understanding, feeding into the, the project, and then finally, what, what comes out of it, hopefully, is a consensus project, not something that's imposed, but something that's built up through, through the community. Um, we're doing this in all sorts of places. This is a, an old shipyard, um, not in Malmo, but this is in the Isle of Wight, um, where people themselves, there's, it's people, people say the unsayable. There's a whole political issue down there about we want more work, we want more employment, but the community realises that shipbuilding isn't coming back. I think now they're going through the same sort of thing. It's time that we actually use the land for something that will benefit the community, in this case, likely to be a residential scheme, but that it can open up the waterfront for locals and all the activity that can then happen, which is art, recreation, culture, cafe society, etc. The Scottish Government has engaged this process now, has adopted it as policy, uh, and are encouraging all communities to run charrette, or charrette processes, or community planning processes, at the starting point of their local planning process. So communities can come together in a professionally facilitated way uh, to talk about their place and how it's going to grow and develop into the future. Uh, this is now an accepted way of doing it. This is in southwest of Scotland, um, where we've been working with community there. Um, working in communities, in developing places, developing countries, We're always working in the local language of course, working with local teams, um, but in this case developing a new eco-region, eco-tourism area with 
communities that are already there, but living subsistence lives in real, really in poverty, deprivation, no utilities, no services, lots of malnutrition, disease. And again, the local communities are able to say what they want to do, and how this, this new development which they support actually can benefit them. Um, and by working and understanding not just about the physical issues, but thinking about the cultural. Um, this lady is a geomancy consultant, so she's talking to the community about their local myths and legends, which come into then the designing of, of the master plan, because obviously the land is something that they've known through their generations, and they have all sorts of stories and things about places that they wouldn't build for, for various reasons. In fact, she, she has a process where, she, from her office in Germany, she has her um, process where she downloads a pendant over a plan and identifies the areas of energy. And she was absolutely, some, some of us were a bit skeptical about it, but when she got into the, onto the, this is in Lombok, um, everything that she'd uh, thought through, through her desktop work was, was played out with the local community. So that was quite amazing. But, but they, they, we gained so much respect from them for first of all talking to them, but secondly, taking note of, 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 of their culture and their, their beliefs. Um, even into, this is, I think, one of the most high profile brownfield urban regeneration projects in, in, in Europe at the moment. Um, it's just started on site, they've just started to build this first block. It's not actually that's the initial master plan, but Battersea Power Station, um, which is a a local landmark in, in London, probably known around the world for various reasons. Pink Floyd was playing in a shop yesterday, Animals, Sheep from Animals was playing. That was uh, the album cover, Maxi Power Station. Collaborative planning processes, bringing in uh, experts, in this case, the, the client didn't want to work. This is about branding, about creating the, pr creating the place, place making, the first time we've ever done it or the client certainly on, on such a large scale had, had run a place-making process, bringing in experts talking about art, culture, retail, um, a whole range of different things, branding, uh, how to, to keep the, the concept of place in the, at the heart of the development process all the way through. So we've now um, written, and this is just about to be published, place book, uh, which is the, the project bible. So at the front end, we're, we're also the strategic advisors and master plans for the, for, the, for, the, for the project. But at the front end, this, this whole thinking is up, is up there, and it, and it will see, goes right through the project. The Battersea Power Station will be an enormous shopping centre, cultural arts um, platform, but with housing, an enormous mixed-use building. Catrum, how am I doing? Well over. Uh, you're you're okay. finishing up on your time, actually. Yeah. Cajun Barracks is uh, a very good example of involving communities where initially uh, it was an old army barracks, empty, the community were asked by the council what they wanted and they said nothing, basically. Um, and it was sold to the developer for that value, which was, it was an unviable brief that the council developed. The community just wanted green space, they didn't want any building, maybe, uh, I think there was about 60 homes up there that they said would be okay. Um, but through a community planning process, asking people about their lives and their neighbourhood, which this sat in, um, people got very animated and started to realise and understand the issues, understand the, the economic realities, and understand that actually this place could bring them a lot of community benefits if it was planned in the right way, and they were engaged in the process. Um, and they started to identify things that they needed in their community, and also to understand how difficult you know, you can always criticise, it's very easy, but when you're confronted with the reality of, okay, you tell us how it should be, how it should work in your community, how you make it viable, you know, how it's sustainable, how it brings lots of different benefits, um, they understood that actually it's not as simple as that. But this is a very important thing, the two-way process of learning between professionals and the community. Um, this was done before. Uh, computers and desktop publishing things, so we used to write things by hand. Um, but this lady came to make the sandwiches, but she'd, she, she was the caterer, but she had brought up a family of four and she had grandchildren in this neighbourhood. And so 
um, when the report back, so we always get the local communities to report back. And this drawing is done, drawings like that can be done in an hour. You know, you've got facilitators and you know what they're doing. And this is the last stage of the two day process. So people have already started about, well, actually, we want what we're talking about. We want a mixed use place with lots of attractions, things that for us, things for the new people who are going to live there, open space, arts, culture, health, jobs, shopping. How does it all work? It's a village. And that was drawn, and people often want a heart, and that's where most things, the activities happen. Uh, and the housing officer who was there said, well, I live 20 miles away. This lady, she, she's brought up generations here, so she used to do the report back. Uh, and so instead of making sandwiches at this point, she ended up reporting back a plan that she understood as well. She understood that. If you, if you brought, walked her in two days before and said, what's this? She said, I don't know. But because she's worked on it and talked about it, she understands it. She understands the relationships. So that was the vision. Uh, we added £60 million of value in five days of community planning. Um, and that's it built out, pretty much the same. And the key really, I suppose, is, yes, there's lots of housing, and the housing brings the value um, and enables other things to happen. And the community would give them some of the existing buildings. And it's the mixed uses that makes the place important and creative and vibrant and gives people that sense of life and well-being. And not forgetting the children, young people, you know, is this art? This is art for them. This is creativity. They're skateboarding. This is, an, this is the church that's listed that no one wanted and the skateboarding club that was set up straight after the event moved into there. And it now has 20,000 members 6,000 who are active annually use this venue. All generations from three to, in fact, there's a, an over 50 skateboarding club. For, for, for these people, then, they are engaged in an artistic, cultural activity at that time. All the uh, church and pews and everything are underneath. This is a more sort of established type of cultural venue. There's creches there, but that, there's theatre, there's um, dance, there's all sorts of things. This is all run by the community because they were involved in the process and they said what they wanted. They created the value uh, and some of that value fed back. So there's a community trust here, there's an environment trust. The environment trust manages the landscape and um, it's 10 years on. It's all fully built out, very, very popular. Prices are 15% higher than they are in the surrounding neighborhood because people appreciate what it is that is there and they want it. Finally, Scarborough, uh, I mentioned about working with whole towns. This is 70,000 people. A vision for Scarborough. When we arrived, um, the, the place was really, sorry, I should go back. The place was really in a bad way. Um, people stopped going there on holiday. It was a seaside, the first seaside town in, in, in England, in the world maybe. Um, and people stopped going there because they went to Spain and uh, they had a lot of problems then followed. Alan Aitborn, who's a very famous playwright who has a theatre there, basically said at the start of the process to the town, you've got to wake up, smell the coffee. His theatre company got involved at the beginning, did a lot of animation. They started off the community planning weekend with a, a, a youth theatre doing a, 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 a theatrical um, piece on what is regeneration. Um, so young people were engaged, the cultural community was engaged right from the start. Um, we ran workshops, etc. We had over a thousand people engaged in the two days, all those local organisations. This is the amount of time and thinking, we're actually thinking about the wisdom of the crowd. There's 5,000 hours of free time. And we developed a master plan with the community, but it, it, it recognised all the different layers of the place. It wasn't just a dry planning process. It was about how, is, what, how do people actually see this place for real? Not from a planning point of view. It's a culture town, it's a heritage town, it's a conference town, it's a tourist town, it's a living town, it's a healthy town, it's a 365 degrees town, it's a town to invest in, it's a town to learn, it's a town, it's a festival town. How many of those are arts and culture? Well, you'd probably say six to start with, but actually they all are as well because there's art and culture in people's homes, there's, there's art and culture in investment, there's et cetera, et cetera. And the town team, the follow-on process, this open-endedness, this town team is still running over 10 years later because the community then came together 
and people took on a lot of the projects. This, there was money coming in from regional development agencies, ten times more from private sector investment because the town had a clear vision now, which was shared by the community and was worked through by this organisation. There's the arts and culture coming into the town team, but I would say there's the culture in all of that. Created the charter, and the town started being proud of itself and going out there and drawing in investment and making things happen. And this, this was the vision drawn at the weekend, and that's the reality five years later when it was actually all built out, bringing in new, new revenue through tourism, through, through boating, et cetera, et cetera, environment improvement, improving the quality of the businesses, allowing a, a, a lot of cultural-led regeneration too, and, and a lot of um, awards there through including the International Participation Award, uh, but also Europe's most enterprising town. But a, an awful lot of focus on bringing an art, a creative community back into Scarborough and providing the provision for them. So basically, uh, the point being here, sorry to use Prince Charles, but it's quite a good quote, that it's all too important to be left to, to the professionals. And professionals actually should be, you asked the question about, uh, is this something that architects are doing, um, but you know, that, that's an open question I think, but uh, we really need to be going out to, to communities um, to, to design our places, so how are we going to engage our communities? Thank you very much. Thank you Charles. Uh, uh, <coughs>